Heartbroken to share that I've lost the first half. The entire video is gone. There's no video, so unfortunately, won't be able to bring in the second half. Hopefully on YouTube, but I do apologize profusely. As then it gives Perry now the, to send us the second half to the 20, and down to about the 30 yard line. I'm hoping to be able to find somehow find the first half video. I have no idea where it went. It should have saved like it usually usually does. We do have a highlight that pretty much tells you what the first half was like when that was the last play of the first half. Tim Bushy's second interception of the game. Unfortunately, we've lost just about everything else from the first half, and I'm very heartbroken right now. Uh, hopefully, we'll have that same problem here in the second half. At least bring you something here on YouTube that you will be able to enjoy and possibly take away from. There we go, Austin starts the ball first down at 10 at their own 30 yard line as we start the second half. Trailing 22 to nothing. Tim Bushy in back in the quarterback, Xander Gibbons parries there in the backfield. And the handoff to Gibbons Perry. Break a couple tackles, still going, and to about the 35 yard line, so maybe a gain of five on that one. But I can tell you about the first half hour, ladies and gentlemen, is that the player of the game has so far been Marquise Eberhardt. He has three touchdown passes. One went to Deion Ortiz, again, a 60-yard touchdown, which we lost on our, our camera, unfortunately. Second one on a fourth and one from the four-yard line. Short pass out to the receiver behind the line of scrimmage. He got up uh, being touched and walked into the end for the touchdown. And the third one... But to Derek Whitley, the end of the first half, so it's 22 nothing Blitz and Bears. Here's a second down at three, though. Handoff to Gibbs Perry. Flag is down, and Gibbs Perry trips over his own teammate. Fell on top of number eight, Giannis Politis. Yanni Politis, excuse me. And penalty. Let's check the marker, though. That's an offside on the Blitz and Bears, so a First down for the Western, for the, uh, excuse me, for the Western Wildcats. 13.44 left here, first, third quarter. Saving our broadcast in this game. Second half, anyway. Hopefully, you get the first half. Probably, we'll see. Berkshire Bankfield, Foley Stadium here in Worcester, Massachusetts. One, two, nothing is your score. If anything, we'll have a highlight of the interception at the end of the first half that pretty much explains what this game has been so far. Hopefully, you get some highlights in the second half. We'll be able to share with you guys on social media. Sure, stay tuned to that. First down, Wildcats now. 13-24 left for third quarter. Ball at the 40-yard line. Push fakes, throws short, passes caught. There's Festus Connor Jr. with the grab. He gets a four or five yard gain. You know, I was so distraught about that whole thing with the with the camera ruining the first half broadcast. I was unable to check on the latest scores and updates. So we'll try to do that sometime at the broadcast. If not, stay tuned to the New England Football League, the NFL Players Forum. I'm sure. You'll get updates from there. Or follow the Mass Warriors. Rhode on Riptide, Vermont Ravens, and Rhode on Raptors on social media. So they'll update everybody from there. Second and six, ball to 45. Bushy hands off to Gibbs Perry. And Perry gets maybe two, three yards on that play. Bring about third down and three. Bushy has two interceptions, one coming at the very end of the first half, last play of the first half. So it's the tail of two quarterbacks here, really. Again, Marquis Eber. Marquis Eber has three touchdown passes. To Bushy has two interceptions. So we're third down and four officially at the 47. 12 minutes left, third quarter. Worcester down 22 to nothing. Biggest challenge they faced so far all season long. Bushy. Throws, pass is caught by Connor Jr. Pass is caught Jr. on the sideline. Finally, still going, and finally a butter bounds inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line. First down, Worcester. And that just might be the play they need to get back into this game. 
With 11.42 left here in the third quarter. We will see how things go here in the second half. Hopefully we'll get you the broadcast. If not, we'll hopefully at least have that one highlight. We'll at least have that one highlight, if anything. Because the camera cut out at the end of the first half. We got about three minutes of video from the first half. And we had that clip of Bushy's interception. Derek Whitley, who, by the way, has a touchdown grab, also has the other interception off of Tim Bushy. Again, hoping to get that, find that video somewhere on, on this camera and bring you that highlight. And off to give us Perry inside the 30 to about the 20. Maybe it looks like 26 gain, a good gain there, about seven yards, bring up second down three. Worcester needing a win here tonight to hold on to the number two seed. They'll be holding on to the number two seed in the North Atlantic Division until next week. We'll see what happens next week as they, as the Southern Vermont Storm will play these Woodson Bears in Bennington, Vermont. A win for the Storm. Well, even maybe even a loss here for Worcester would tie the, would make it just the, because right now the Worcester Wildcats have a one game lead for second place in the division. So a loss here would make it one and a half games. If it drops to six and three. Oh no, it would be one game. Because Southern Mont's still five and two. Bushy. Floats it. Pass is caught. Kenny Carrera, we have yet to call his name, and there he is. Down inside the 20, the 19 yard line. And that's gonna be enough for a Wildcat first down. Again, this is exactly the drive, kind of drive they needed here. As they keep it going. Inside 10 minutes now, third quarter. We're gonna Maybe stop this video and start a new one for each time we get a new a new drive going here. So we tried pausing it like we've been trying, and it, and it eventually told us the camera was too full. So that doesn't seem to be working, obviously. Try to avoid the frame of the, the window as well. First and ten, ball to 17 yard line. She hands off to Gibbs Perry. Perry to the outside. And might have gone back to the line of scrimmage. I don't even know if he did that. Might have gone a yard, might have lost the yard. Not a good run there by Gibbs Perry, who has been shut down today by this Blitz and, Blitz and Bears defense. Something we haven't seen all season long. We've seen Gibbs Perry just do his thing all season. And so far in his game, not much of that. 9-12 left here in the third quarter. 22 nothing. Puts in Bears leading. Over the Worcester Wildcats. So that was a gain of one by again to give it to Perry. He usually has much bigger gains than that, but right there, not, not much going on there. Bring up second down and nine for Worcester. Trail 22 nothing. Bring the camera in to try to get your best view. Try not to get the people up down on the sideline, but unfortunately, not doing too good. Second down at 10. Ball to 6, second down, especially second down at 9, ball to 16 yard line. Bushy hands off to Gibbons Perry. The middle gives Perry inside the 10. Still going down about the 6 yard line. That should be enough for a Wildcat first down. First and goal for Worcester. Their second time to have a first and goal. The first time, Manuel Rosario fumbled the football out of bounds, giving the ball back to Western Mass. Fumbled the ball out of the end zone, excuse me, giving the ball back to Western Mass. And that was when they were down 8 to nothing. Western Mass wound up scoring a touchdown on that drive, made it 16 to nothing. That was the touchdown. Oh, no, that was not the touchdown. Though. That was the fourth down touchdown we talked about in the first half that we unfortunately don't have footage for as of right now. First and goal from the five yard line for the Wildcats. She hand off to Gibbons Perry. Perry dies to the end zone. Touchdown, Worcester. Tanner Gibbons Perry gets in from five yards out, and the Wildcats now trail 22 to 6. 7.43 left here in the third quarter. Let's see if their defense can make a stop here. Obviously, we talked about it in the first half. Unfortunately, we didn't have. We don't have any first half coverage anymore, but we talked about it. Miscues with the first half on the 60 yard touchdown to meant to Ortiz. Giovanni, Giovanni, there. It's Giovanni Ortiz. 
defense was able to look like they were able to make a stop. Unfortunately, they just didn't do it. And on a fourth and one, the short pass, the receiver fell after catching the pass. I think he was untouched. And then scored. James Viana off the extra point for the Wildcats. Kick is up. His kick is good. So it is 7.43 left in the third quarter. Bucks and Mass, Bits and Bears lead it 22-6 over the Worcester Wildcats. We'll take a break. Come back. We're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats in the New England Football League right here on YouTube. Wildcats finished. Well, they started 3 and 0 at home this year. If they should lose this game here, they would drop to 3 and 2 at home on the year. They lost against the Southern Vermont Storm 25 21 back on August 27th, their first home loss of the year, now back home here. And a kickoff turn, nice kick turn there by the Storm out to. Now a, a pile up and a scuffle about the 35 yard line. Flags are coming out. Let's see. Ooh, the flags are on. We'll zoom in now. 11:24 left here in the first half. Blitz and Bears lead at 28-14. They've dominated this game. Kabushi has three interceptions. And now a third flag comes out. It looks like number six. And that's Giovanni Ortiz who had the first touchdown of the game. It has to be held back by his teammate. And now we have. We have three flags on the field. What we'll to sort this mess out? It is a big mess. 14 20 left turn. Love 24 left turn in this game. The score is 14 20 14. Excuse me. Stephen are broadcasting this game here at Berkshire Bankfield, the Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. Final regular season game for the Worcester Wildcats here in 2022. They're headed to the postseason. The only question is will they play in Bennington, Vermont against the Southern Vermont Storm or will they be right here at Foley Stadium against those same Storm? Blitz and Bears will host the New England Bombers in the first round on October 15th out in Holyoke, Massachusetts, which is about an hour away from where we sit right now. Again, I do apologize. We do not have the first half broadcast, which was somehow scrapped by this camera, unless we can miraculously find it somewhere. I did learn, though, turn on your backup and sync button when you have a phone such as the uh, camera such as this one. Recording this on my new Motorola Stylus 5G, I thought, you know, it'd be alright. It's not alright. And I'm very sad. We lost great highlights, and I'm sad to not have film for these players and coaches. And I think you said number 25, Gray. That is Alexis Arroyo. One of the linebackers called for the unsportsmanlike. Anyway. So 11-24 left here. Blitz and Bears lead at 28-14. They'll have the ball. Let's see where they put it now after the personal foul. Follow the players. They're going way back. Look how back they're going inside the 10 yard line. They have all those plays back at the 10 yard line. This is a big, big foul. Brings them way back to the 10 yard line. 11 24 left here in this game. 28 14 is your score. Hoping to find the first half footage somewhere. It has to be somewhere, right? There's no way I've recorded this whole thing. We lost it, and it just disappears. I just don't believe that. Anyway, come out a little bit here. There we go. Now we're gonna whistle blows. And now we're just a long stoppage here, just like it was for the last game last week against the Rolling Raptors and the Worcester Wildcats. We had a long stoppage of play. I have another one here. are asking for the game ball. Hey, 
When we do a resume play, I don't know when that'll be. It's first and 10. Bless and Bears have the ball at their own 10. With 11.24 left to score 2014 Western Mass. These two teams met week one. The score was 32-25. Bless and Bears come out on top out in Holy Oak, Massachusetts. And now we're ready to go. About time. First down to 10 from the 10. Marquise Everhart. And the shotgun hands off to Charles. John Charles gets two, maybe a yard or two on that one. Short gain there. Second down coming up. Again, the Maritime Conference is playing their postseason here tonight, Saturday night. Mass Warriors lead, uh, hosting the Royal and Riptide out in Wayland, Massachusetts. And the Rhode Island Raptors hosting the Vermont Ravens at East Providence High School in East Providence, Rhode Island. This is the only North Atlantic Division game being played here today as the Bombers and the Storm are both off this week. Second and an eight from the 12 yard line. And another hand up to Charles. Big hole there to the left, to the left side. Now toward the sideline. Tries to cut back inside, gets knocked out of bounds. Close to a first down if you did not get it already. Let's see. And it looks like it's officially a first down for the Western Mass Bulls and Bears. And so the Western defense, who is supposed to be doing their job right now, is supposed to be making these stops. So far, not so good. They are yet to do so. And we're about 10 minutes left here in this game. It's first and get, first down, Western Mass, Western Mass 22 yard line, 80 to 28 14. They're looking to basically start chewing this clock up. And walk away with the victory here tonight in Worcester. A loss of the Wildcats once again would mean that the Southern Vermont Storm are now just the game out from second place in the North Atlantic Division. But again, they have a game against. He's busted bears next week. They don't, they don't need to win. To even tie the... To even tie Worcester. Now we're going to have a flag. We're going to have a horse collar here on the Wildcats. Looks like Marcus Rodriguez with the horse collar. So that's going to be another... Again, the miscues on the, for Worcester have been... All night. It's been the story of the game for them. Penalties. Miscues. Big reason they're down here. 28-14. Not to mention turnovers. Tim Bushy has two interceptions. Emmanuel Rosario fumbled a short pass from Bushy out of the end zone for a touchback that gave the Putsum Bears the ball at the 20. Leading, they, were, they were already leading 8 to nothing at that point when they were able to recover to really get the fumble out of, bound, out of the end zone for a touchback. They scored on that drive. He made it 16 to nothing. There's now 28-14. We are 9:07 left here in the game. First down at the 44-yard line. And up to Charles. John Charles to mid, close to midfield. Gain a six on that play. Second down and four. All officially in midfield. General Foley Stadium, Berkshire Bankfield, and Foley Stadium here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Third day of autumn, and about a month and a half away from Halloween. People are still out there calling it spooky season and getting their decorations ready, buying their candy, all that good stuff. I have not celebrated Halloween myself in about 12 years. The last time I celebrated Halloween was 2010, and that was a fun year. Celebrating Halloween with a group of my friends back in Carteret, New Jersey. Uh, it was a Sunday that year. Remember the Jets playing the Packers. The Packers won that game 9 to nothing. But that's another story for another time. Second and five. Eight minutes left here in the game. And up to Charles. They're looking to run again to keep running the clock. And it was a nice stop there. Robert Norris, number 77, coming up with the tackle for the Wildcats. It brings up third and five. Still midfield. Uh, second, third and four. Gain one on that play. 747 left, as you can see on the, on the clock. Left in this game. Not looking good for Worcester. They need they needed uh, they need some defense. They made one defensive stop. They scored a touchdown. Givens Perry scored his second touchdown of the game. They need another stop here. 
Third down and three at the 49 yard line. 7.25 left in the game. We're going to zoom in, get you a better shot of this third, crucial third down for both sides. Here we go. Third and three from the 49 yard line. And up to Charles, and Charles is going to be, let's see, it's going to be short. He's going to be a yard short of the first down. It'll be fourth and one as we reach the seven minute mark here in the game. Blitz and Bears have gone for it four times on fourth down. They're three or four. And let's see if they go for it here again on fourth down. And it looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. And it looks like, again, a huge conversion here for both sides. If Worcester makes a stop, they'll be right back in this game. If Western Mass makes uh, converts their fourth fourth down, they'll be looking to put this game away very shortly here as they move towards a undefeated regular season. Fourth and one from the 47 yard line. Hey, Bart's gonna roll out, pressure, and out he goes, fumble the football. Ball is out, Wildcats have it. Not only did the Wildcats even make a stop, they force a turnover, recover it, and with six away left, down just two scores, Wildcats have the ball inside, put some Bears territory. What a play there from the Worcester defense. We'll be right back. You're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats in the New England Football League right here on YouTube. This game is not over yet. It is a two-score game with 6.08 left here in the game. In the game. First down, Worcester at the Blitz and Bears 34-yard line. Bushy in the shotgun. A fake. Throw short to Fest Connors Jr. with the grab. Connor Jr. breaking a couple tackles to about the 26 yard line. Gain of eight on that play, and they're going to go no huddle. Worcester's offense going no huddle. They're running out of time. We're under six minutes left here in the football game. They're down by two scores. They need to get it going and save those timeouts as well. Second and two from the 26. Bushy over the middle. Pass is caught. Nice grab there. By Manuel Rosario. And once again, Worcester's offense going no huddle here. They need to keep rolling. They have a first down. At the 17 yard line. Might be second down and short. 519 left here, third in the game. No, oh, no, ball's at the 12 yard line. First down. Bushy hands out to Gibbons Perry. Gibbons Perry wrapped up in the backfield. Play there made. Number 43, there he is again, Jonathan Brandon. Another great tackle for him. The clock's now running under five minutes left here in the game. What's the mess? What's the Bears lead? It's 28 to 14. Wildcats need to get moving here. Trail by 14. Second down at the 12 yard line. Bushy. Oh, short to Givens Perry. Perry breaking a couple tackles and. How much there, really? No gain. A horrible call there from the coaches. No gain on that screen from Givens Perry. West Mass defense made the play. Third and 10 from the 12 yard line. Bushy, pumps, chucks it, end zone, pass is knocked away. 3.58 left in this game. 2014 puts the match, puts the Bears make the stop. And it'll bring up a fourth down and 10 from the 12. This is the game for the Wildcats now. They need to convert here in order to stay alive. 3.56 left. And they're asking, the players are asking to stop the clock. Fourth down, Bushy. Rolling out pressure, and down he goes. Southern Vermont Storms defense, there's Jonathan Brandon. 
along with number 54, Stephen Warwick. Stephen Warwick. Sorry, I look like I said wrote down Warrior. <laughs> so, Worcester's offense gets nothing done there, and that's going to do it. With 3.23 left here in the game, Western Mass is 28 to 14. We'll be right back. We're watching a presentation of the New England Football League and the Worcester Wildcats right here on YouTube. 323 left in this game. West Mass puts the Bears defense has made a stop to get their offense back, the ball back, leading four by 14. And now handoff looks like number seven. Looks like Dominic Whitley is in the running back now. He has an interception. He has the touch oh, a touchdown. And we're heading under the three minute mark here. So the Western Wildcats will fall to six and three on the year. Have a half game lead. And that was a both timeout. What's there? So again, Worcester will fall to six and three on the year. Southern Mont Storm at five and three. So they're half a game back. They played the Storm, that is, played the Blitz and Bears next week. And they need to win that game. Otherwise, if they if I'm pretty sure if they lose that game, Worcester will take over second place. And no matter if they defeat the New England Bombers in the final game of the regular season. Worcester will earn the two seed, and the playoff game will be held here at Foley Stadium on October 15th. Of course, I could be completely wrong on that. I'm pretty sure the Wildcats will win the two seed by just half a game if they lose. If the Southern Vermont Storm lose next week to the Western Mass Blitz and Bears, but we will see what happens. Stay tuned for updates. For now, it's second out of six to 26. Clock stop. 2:59 left in the game. And there goes Eberhardt. Pitch out to the running back. Fumble the football. Lost the football for a moment there. Looks like he got it back, though. And now Whistle blows. And Worcester calls another timeout. 2.44 left. We'll take it with them. We'll be right back. You're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats and the New Football League right here on YouTube. Third down and six from the 19. 244 left. Western Mass leads at 28-14. Give a heart. Rolling out. He's going to run. Marquis Eberhardt is going to have a first down for the Blitz and Bears. And with two and a half left, they can run out this clock. Clock has actually stopped with 2.29 left. And now the clock continues to roll. So assuming what we are expecting, next week we will be at Wayland High School in Wayland, Massachusetts for the New England Football League Maritime Conference Championship game between the West and the Mass Warriors and the Royal Island Raptors. But again, it could also be at Preach Power to Rhode Island or even in Burlington, Vermont. Hand off to Charles. The middle. Fumble! A fumble to football. The Wildcats recover! And Al Price with the recovery. Oh my goodness, it is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see, the offense comes back out for Worcester. They're down 14 with 156 left. And they're right back. They might just come be right back in it. Big fumble there by Worcester Mass's offense. Give the ball right back to Worcester. At the 27 yard line. 156 left here in the game. Stay tuned, we will have an update for you on whether or not we'll be at Wayland High School next week, East Providence High School next week, or even in Burlington, Vermont, potentially next week. Again, the only way we're in Burlington, Vermont next week for our next broadcast of the Maritime Conference Championship Games is if the both the three and four seeds, the three seed being the Vermont Ravens and the four seed with Royal Island Riptide, win their prospective playoff games on the road. Uh, we will see. First down, Worcester at the 27-yard line. Bushy. 
Oh, the middle pass is caught. Yeah. Here he goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Worcester. There you go. Just like that, they're back in it. Bestus Connor Jr. with the touchdown. And it is just an eight-point game with 147 left. I have seen crazy things in my broadcasting career. I've seen a crazy comeback. 27 to 7 last year. Rick City Tigers led the Hudson Valley Mountaineers at one point. Hudson Valley came roaring back to win that game. 35-31 out in Rosa, New Jersey. Let's see if James Viana can make it a one-score game here. We're 147 level. It is not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. We have an exciting finish here coming in Worcester. Stay tuned. Here comes James, again James Viana looking to make this a seven point game. James Viana's kick is good. 147 left. It is a one score game. 28 21. Messer Mass Blitz and Bears lead the Worcester Wildcats. We'll take a break right back with this exciting finish. You're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats and the New England Football League right here on YouTube. And we can be in for a very exciting finish here tonight in Worcester. Onside kick. And as recovered by some of the mass. Fumble! Fumble the football! Let's see! And Wildcats have recovered! Wildcats have the onside kick and they have the football down by seven with 147 left. We are in for a very exciting finish here in Worcester. And now another scuffle. I don't know who recovered the onside. It looked like Southern, um, Western Mass recovered the onside, but it looks like the guy fumbled the football. And it is Worcester football. Once down 28 to 7. They have a chance here to tie this football game. It was 28 14 with three and a half minutes left. 28 to 7. It is now 28-21, and the Wildcats get the football back. Their offense looking to tie this game up and potentially send this one into overtime. We might have an exciting highlight review for you guys after all. We have the touchdown from Festus Connor Jr. And now we have this. Now let's see if Worcester's offense can come out and score the game-tying touchdown. Under two minutes left here at General Floyd Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. And now a flag comes out. This is going to be on the Bears. Under sort of reference for something. I didn't really see it, but I know we have a long stoppage here, so that, that, that clearly means, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it usually means that there is personal foul. And now a second flag comes out. Let's see. Number 24 for the Bears coming off the field. Looks like he's very frustrated. Imagine the two number 24s on our roster. We have Kashif Shepard and Josiah Griffin. Still 147 left here. A lot, a lot of going on here with the. Looks like the butt, the Blitz and Bears sideline, they just got guys coming off the sideline there in frustration. The bottom of your screen, you see head coach for the Worcester Wildcats, Dennis Faulkner. His team down 28 to 7 with three and a half left in this football game. Out trail by seven with 147 left. And they're getting the football back. Ball, let's see where they put it. Spot the ball. And we have a an ejection here for the Blitz and Bears. I'm not sure who it was. I did not hear the name, the number. But there is an ejection from... And another flag! What is going on here with the Blitz and Bears, obviously? 
Not number five, make poking fun at the Wildcats because they're, they're getting free yards here from the Blitz and Bears. The frustration has flipped to the other side of the field here. Again, once leading 28 to seven with three minutes left. Worcester has made this a two score game. So I, I was upset that I lost, I'm still upset that I've lost two good, at least one great highlight. Man, um, Giovanni Ortiz's 60 yard touchdown make it eight nothing. What's the mess? That was a, a perfect highlight for my reel. And now it's all gone, unfortunately. But this second half, we've had this comeback. So even if we don't have the whole thing, we at least have the comeback of the season here for the Wildcats. What a game this has been. What an ending this is going to be here. Now here we go, here we go. Now they're finally going. And the crowd is getting loud here at Foley Stadium. Some of them left the game when it was 28 to 7. Unfortunately, here at Foley Stadium, there's no re-entry. And now the crowd that has stayed is on their feet here. And as we're headed deep into Blitzen Bears territory here. And they're going even further here. Way into Blitzen Bears territory. Ball, let's see. Ball is at the 13 yard line. This is a perfect opportunity for the walk. And another flag. What is going on here? This is as much chaos as we saw last week with the Rolling On Raptors game at the start of the second half. Five consecutive penalties. Here we've had maybe five. We've at least had four consecutive penalties on before we even got a playoff. All right, now, now, now the, now the Bears have called a timeout. We're gonna, we're gonna come back. We're gonna come back when this all settled down. We're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats in the New Football League right here on YouTube. The ball is now at the six-yard line, following all those penalties by the Blitz and Bears. It's a one-score game. Bushy, Givens Perry, inside about the four, three or four-yard line. The clock continue to run, and another flag. Oh my goodness gracious! That is the fifth penalty. And now Tim Bushy looking over at the sideline. Clucks to need to run. Now they'll stop at 117 left here in the game. Clock should have stopped after the penalty was thrown. The officials time out here. So a lot, a lot of dragging on here in this game. But well, we're just hoping at the end we have a very exciting finish. Once 17 left, it was 28 to seven. Two minutes ago, in game time. Blitz and Bears had just ran it for a first. Uh, Eberhardt, the quarterback for the Blitz and Bears, just ran for a first down. Now on the next play, the running back fumbled the football. Walk has recovered, they scored. And they scored again. It was 28 to 21. 117 left the ball inside the five yard line. Wildcats looking to tie this game up. And either what's the Bears gonna go for the win or we're we gonna go to overtime, which will be the first time this season the Wildcats have gone to overtime. Well again, which by the way, what a comeback here by the Wildcats. Down 28 to 7 with two couple minutes left. Second down, Bushy. To give it to Perry. Perry! Out of bounds at the one. Very close, but he's out of bounds. Clock stopped. 1 12 left. 1 minute 12 seconds left. Third and goal at the one yard line. Wildcats looking to tie this game up. Looks like they need a big stop here. Keep him out of the end zone and force a fourth down. It would be the most biggest crucial fourth down of the game by far. Let's see what happens here on third and goal from the one yard line. 112 left. 28 21. Western Mass Blitz and Bears lead the Worcester Wildcats. General Foley Stadium in Worcester, Massachusetts. Stephen Herb broadcasting this game. 
This has been a hell of a game. Biggest comeback I've seen in my career. Broadcasting the last four years. I've never seen a comeback such as this one, except for Super Bowl 51, of course. Bushy gives to give Perry touchdown Worcester! And we are an extra point away from a tie game with 108 left here in the fourth. What a comeback by the Wildcats. Now it is all on James Viana. And timeout. What a comeback by the Worcester Wildcats here today. Down 28 to 7 at one point. 28 14 with three and a half left. Now James Viana to tie this game and the whistle blows again. There's a timeout here. 108 left. We are an extra point away from a tie football game here in Worcester. We are staring in the we are staring overtime in the face, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, James Viana, 2021 All-Star kicker for the tie. The kick is good. We are tied at 28 with 108 to go. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back for an exciting finish. You're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats and the New England Football League right here on YouTube. Said it on August 27th when the Wildcats played the Southern Vermont Storm. I'll say it here again. What a game. We are in for a hell of a finish here in Worcester. Do not go anywhere. Uh, James Viana's kickoff goes. That's a drop there about the 14 yard line. Here come the Blitz and Bears down the sideline. Past the 30, inside the 35. And the Blitz and Bears have plenty of time here. I don't know how many timeouts they have. One minute and one second left here. Blitz and Bears and the Worcester, Worcester Mass Blitz Bears, Worcester Wildcats tied at 28 apiece. Let's see if Marquise Eberhardt, who has three touchdown passes in this game, can be the hero for the Western Mass Bolton Bears, the number one team in the North Atlantic Division Conference. Or if the Worcester defense can make yet another stop and give their offense a chance to win this game. 1 0 1 left. First down, Worcester uh, Blitzen Bears at the 25. First down, Blitz Bears at the 35 yard line. Eberhardt short out to number five. We'll get your name in a second as he gets toward the sideline. Cut inside to midfield. Still going and finally out of bounds. That is Joseph Colon. Joseph Colon, J C O L O N. By the way, you like to say it. Big play there for Western Mass's offense. 53 seconds left. Ball is at the Worcester 46 yard line. We are tied at 28 with 53 seconds left. First down, Western Mass. Ball at the Worcester 46 yard line. Eberhard rolling out to his right. Pressure's coming. There's Malone. Gene Charles with the pressure and. Gets away from it. Heba Hart gets about, looks like seven yards on that play. Ball now at the Worcester 39 yard line. 45 seconds left. Again, a win for Worcester. They would all but lock up. The number two seed in the North Atlantic Division Conference. They would go up three games. On the Southern Vermont Storm, who have just two games left. Next week they'll host these Whistling Bears out in Bennington, Vermont. 
Then they're at Braintree against the New England Bombers. They are rolling out. Looking. Pressure. Down he goes and he... Oh no, he got away. But doesn't get much... Maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. The clock and now whistle blows. A timeout will be called with 31 seconds left. Big play there for the Worcester defense. Looks like he made a sack on Eberhard, but he got away from it. Got back to the line of scrimmage, if that. 31 seconds left. We have a timeout. Uh, they have a kicker wrist listed on their roster. Marcus Cadigan, number 19. Excuse me, number 18. Marcus Cadigan is listed as a kicker as well as a tight end on the Blitz and Bear roster. So, from here, it would be a 56-yard field goal. With 31 seconds left. They, I would assume they want to get deeper into Worcester territory. Make an easier field goal. But even if they can't get the touchdown here, they have a chance... For a law for a field goal. But first they need to convert. Third down and third down and three from the 39-yard line. 31 seconds left. Eberhardt. Pumps through. Rolling out. It's gonna roll. It's gonna run. First down. Western Mac. Ball with the football. Ball is on the ground. Let's see who has it. Eberhardt fumbled the football. 20 seconds out, Western Mass recovered. 17 seconds. It's fourth and one, 13 seconds left. Clock is continuing to run. Eberhardt, pump throws over the middle, pass is caught. Still going, number 19. There he goes. Down inside the 15, down, looks like about the 15 yard line. The time has expired though. The clock has run out. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time this season, we're going to overtime. Here in Worcester, we'll be right back for the start of overtime. You're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats and the New England Football League right here on YouTube. This has been the game of the year by far. A 28-7 deficit. 22-0 at halftime nonetheless. Worcester's come all the way back and we are here in overtime. As James Giannis kick is away. Western Mass won the toss. They direct to receive the football. Start this overtime period. And a big hole there. And finally brought down inside Worcester territory is number 14. K. John K. Juan Smith with the return. So good starting field position for the Southern Moss Storm. Now overtime rules are as they are in the NFL regular season. First score wins. So, what's the Bears looking to win this game? Continue their regular season, perfect regular season. And they have the ball at the Wildcat 45 yard line as we begin overtime. Who would have thought, watching the beginning of this broadcast that you are watching, unfortunately, no first half, but we got the biggest comeback of the season. You can't ask for much better than that. And a handoff here to John Charles. Charles inside the 40, about the 39 yard line gain of about six, second down four coming up. So I kind of did a little math here. And I think there's still a chance that Southern Vermont can win. Second place in the North Carolina Division as we have a Wildcat down now. And that is Gene, looks like the Malone Gene Charles. Gene Charles has been popping up this crowd throughout the comeback. And he will come out of the game. Now ah, it might be 26, Al Price, who recovered a fumble earlier on. As his jersey kind of, you know, half tied up, half up over his torso. Can't really tell who that is. Is either Malone Jones, Gene Charles, or Al Price. By the way, he comes off under the power of good news. See that. 
Second out of four, ball to 39 yard line for the Blitz and Bears. Hand off to Charles again. John Charles. First down, Blitz and Bears. And they're driving here, looking to win this game in overtime. Shaq DeBagno on the tackle. First down, Blitz and Bears at the 31 yard line. Again, they score a touchdown here. The game is over. And the, well, the Blitz and Bears will continue to be undefeated here. But the Wildcats will end their 2022 regular season. Second home loss of the year. First down ball to 31 yard line. And up to Charles. Charles doesn't get much there, if anything at all. It's a couple yards there. We're at 14 minutes left here in overtime. Now, don't even ask me about the possibility of this game ending in a tie, because if this game ends in a tie, I have no idea where this, that, that stands for the standings as far as Western Ma I mean, not Western Mass, Southern Vermont and the Wildcats go. Because no matter what happens at this point, Western Mass is the number one seed. They are going to be the number one seed, and will host the New England Football League's North Atlantic Championship in Holyoke on, on October 22nd. Barring any upset losses, timeout, Worcester. Let's call his timeout. We'll take it with them. You're watching a presentation of the Worcester Wildcats in the New England Football League right here on YouTube. Second down at seven from the 33 yard line, out of the timeout. Good heart throws short, pass is caught. Short gain there, again, see who caught the ball. Looks like no gain on that one. Well, actually, there was a gain on that one. The third down, ball to 24. Third down and one. Third and one. At the, well, it looks like that's actually the 23 yard line. Scoreboard reads the 24, but the ball is actually looks like it's placed at the 23 yard line. So third down and one either way. 13 20 left in overtime. Western Mass can win with a touchdown here. And they play the play dead. False start on the Blitz and Bears. Actually, a first down for the Blitz and Bears. I thought we thought it was a third down. It's a first down. First Bears. Oh no, it was an offside on the Worcester on the Wildcats, so it is an automatic first down. Worcester again miscues with these penalties today, giving free yards to the Blitz and Bears. Not that like the Blitz and Bears have done that themselves, but the, it's killed the Wildcats more than it has killed Western Mass. First and ten at the 18-yard line. Hard hands off to Charles. Charles cuts it up the middle. And out of bounds, about the 12 yard line. Gain is six. Manuel Beto on the stop. Manuel Beto on the stop. So, gain is, officially gain is seven on that play. Second and three. Second down and three. Ball at the 11 yard line. I do my best to do to mark where the balls are. Can't really see from where I'm standing. That's with the camera We're literally right in front of my face. I have to look up a little bit to actually see the field. See what I'm looking at. Twelve fifty-seven left in this overtime period. Worcester Wildcats all come all the way back to now twenty-eight to seven. Forced overtime. But now the Blitz and Bears looking to win this game in the end. Second down and three. Ball at the eleven yard line. Eberhard fakes it. He's going to run. And Eberhard down to looks about the five yard line. First down, what, uh, Bits and Bears. First and goal at the five yard line. 12.51 left here in this overtime period. 
We are tied at 28. Now we have substitutions. On the Divas line, number 72 comes out. Robert Norris comes in, number 77. First and goal. First and goal from the five yard line. Gene Char John Charles up the middle. And a couple, a couple yards on that one. It's gonna be get inside the five. He's second down and goal. What's the mass knocking on the doorstep to win this game in the end? I'm sure Storm fans will be looking to see how this game turns out. They might even be watching film. Not only to see how the their opponent will be next week against these same Blitz and Bears. Let's see how to stop them. Because Worcester has done their job in stopping this Blitz and Bears team. Obviously, they came down, backed them down 22 to nothing at halftime. And 20 to 7 at one point. 20 to 14, which is three and a half minutes left in regulation. The fourth overtime. Now here are the Blitz and Bears for second and goal at the one yard line. Charles. No signal yet. Short. Wow, what a play by Worcester's defense making the stop there. Third down coming up. Third down and goal. And there he is, Gene Charles. I'm allowing Gene Charles. We talked about him a few times. He's been popping up this crowd as they've come back. It'll be third down and goal from the one. We'll zoom in, get through the best possible angle from for this 11 minutes left here in overtime. Big play for both sides. Wilson looking to make a stop here. And the Woodson Bears looking to end it here. Third and goal from the one yard line. Is going to keep. Eva Hart for the touchdown, and the Western Mass Blitz and Bears have won this football game in overtime. Final score 34 to 28. What a game it was for the Western Wildcats for the New England Football League. I'm Stephen Erd. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For the second half of the broadcast, anyway, we will again do apologize for missing out the first half. Good night from beautiful General Foley Stadium here in Worcester, Massachusetts.